few years ago, my birth mum overdosed. She was put in the ICU. And in the beginning, they gave us hope that maybe she'd be able to live, but just have to learn to walk or talk again. But shortly this changed, and she was put on life support, and time started to dwindle. For almost a week, my sister and I drove back and forth to the hospital, almost an hour and a half away. Staying till very late hours at night, I, being the oldest, was helping everyone feel better and soothing my younger siblings, the youngest being 10. I was around 21 or 22 at the time, now 25. Last night, I stayed and my sister left. My adoptive mom said she'd pick me up. In this time alone, I spent with my birth mom. I brushed her hair, I held her hand, talked to her, told her I loved her, and then completely lost it. I cried harder than I ever cried. I hadn't eaten all day. It was finally hitting me. Finally, I went home. That night, I had a dream of my birth mom telling me thank you, how much she loved me, and goodbye. I was confused, but I told my siblings and my grandma. That same night, they all had a dream of her as well. Without knowing, my sisters and I drove to the hospital, thinking we still had time. And as we got there, we learned she had passed. She had actually visited us all to say goodbye to each of us. Every single one of us had different dreams, but the same message. Following this, my grandma found white feathers in her closet. My grandpa went to his hunting shack and found a note she had written months before and went back to his truck to hear, You Are My Sunshine. The original by Johnny Cash, playing on a radio. A song that she had sung to us for many years. And I should note that our family is very spiritual, not so religious, and we've all been very open and had the gift of the third eye, so we knew her energy would be strong. But following, my pictures would start to fall off my wall. I've had multiple dreams of her visiting, so vivid and I could just feel her presence around me. Even years later, she sends me messages to get my attention. Just the other day, she changed my radio station multiple times and visits me in my dreams. She's gone, but she's so very much still here. So growing up, I lived in a house that had a cemetery from the 1800s behind it. Along with this, in my side yard, you could still see the fountain from where a school house burnt down. I used to sleep in this one room and every single night I would have nightmares, wake up screaming and I'd see a man with a top hat standing in my door frame, staring at me. And sometimes I'd see a little girl in a white dress sitting on my bed. I remember one night when I was little, the girl was sitting on my bed and I was screaming to have my mom come in the room. And she looked at me and told me like, shh. And as soon as my mom reached the doorway, the girl disappeared. Every night in that bedroom, I would have recurring nightmares. Wake up, see the people, and then when my mom would reach my bedroom, they would disappear. And I would often be extremely exhausted, even at like six years old, and complain to my family that they kept me up and wanted to play. I've also heard a legend that when seeing a little girl in a white dress and man in top hat means that there's distress and that this is a common pair of spirits to come. Along with this, at about age 11 or 12, I decided to switch bedrooms across the hall. After this, the occurrences almost completely stopped. There's also been multiple times that my mom would be downstairs doing laundry and think that all of my siblings, there were six of us, I was adopted and I was young while they were all teenagers. We're up and people are running up and down the hallway and she would get upstairs and everyone was sleeping. Multiple people have heard babies crying, seen little children and weird stuff will happen like lights flickering, phones ringing but nobody would be there, wind chimes moving inside the house or spinning around super fast, pictures falling off the walls and like you just could just feel a presence walking down the hall in between those two bedrooms especially. It's super spooky there, and 25 years later, I still get creeped out at night there. Everyone who has been there, even for short periods of time, will tell you they felt it. It's just there. (laughs) 
I live in an apartment with my boyfriend. Nobody other than him or myself has a key to our home, and we always lock the door and door chain before we go to bed. So last night, when we were in bed, I was having a lot of trouble sleeping. This is pretty common for me. And I ended up just scrolling on my phone for a bit while my boyfriend was asleep next to me. He didn't get up at all during this time, and neither did I. Before I knew it, it was 3am, and I knew I had to try to get some sleep. I wanted to get some water though, so I walked out to our living area, and sitting in the middle of our coffee table was a lit candle. Now at first glance, I didn't think anything of it. We usually have a candle lit in the evening, and even though I 100% saw my boyfriend blow it out before we went to bed, I'm aware that candles can actually relight themselves. However, when I walked up to blow it out, I stopped in my tracks. This is not a candle we have ever lit. In fact, its usual place is not even on my coffee table. It's been sitting on another shelf with the lid on since I moved in. But it was in the centre of my coffee table lit, with the lid sitting right next to it. And oddly enough, with no light nearby. I blew out the candle and got some water, and decided I would ask my boyfriend about it in the morning. Maybe he chose to light that candle the previous day, and I just didn't notice. But the next day I asked him about it, and he said no. He specifically remembered lighting and blowing out the candle we always use. We're both just confused. Neither of us have ever slept or walked as far as I know. And that would even be hard for me to believe, because I was awake the entire night up until then. And I definitely didn't hear anyone in the apartment. I will also say, this is the only time anything else of the ordinary has happened here. The only other weird thing is that my boyfriend and I have both been having very vivid, strange dreams recently. We even talked about it a couple nights prior, and thought it was weird that it started happening to both of us at the same time. One day, I was driving to meet my sister for lunch in a city in Northern Virginia, about an hour from my house. It was raining outside and I had pretty much no tread on my tires, but I didn't know that at the time. Anyway, I had to take an exit onto a busy highway. If you've ever driven in Northern Virginia, you'll know the traffic is absolutely terrible because of all the commuting people do from DC. As I was turning slash merging onto the highway, my car completely lost traction and I started spinning. I spun onto the highway, all the while just clutching my steering wheel and hoping for the best, as I had absolutely no control. I ended up stopping in the middle of the highway, facing the direction of oncoming traffic. Here's the weird part. When this happened, there was not a single car on either side of the road, not a single car in sight. Without thinking, I drove my car straight, the opposite direction of traffic, until I reached a patch of grass. I kid you not, the second my car was out of the way, cars were flying down the road again, hundreds of them. It was an extremely busy road once more. My sister even passed me, called me, and asked if it was me parked in the grass. I immediately started crying because I was suddenly overwhelmed with the severity of what had just happened. Had the traffic been what it normally was during my accident, I would have surely been hit head on and most likely killed. I still cannot explain what happened to me to this day. It was like a glitch in the system. Obviously, it could have just been an extremely lucky coincidence. However, I drive this road quite frequently and have never ever seen this highway with not a single car in sight. And somehow, there was nobody for the entire duration of my accident. If anyone has ever experienced anything similar, please let me know. My mum used to go to some kids' house for after school. She helped them study, and this girl she taught moved houses several times. One time, she moved to this big, really old palace with many, many stairs, and her apartment was like on the fifth floor, which is pretty high for an Italian building, so my mom had to go there and go up the stairs. Every time she went up the stairs, like in the moments she was in the stairs, she felt sick. Like she started feeling nauseous, lightheaded. Her legs were heavy and she felt like fainting, like something bad was going to happen. 
All of this disappeared when she got into the house. At first, she kind of handled it. She ran through the stairs and tried to ignore that feeling. I remember her coming home from work and telling my dad she felt so bad she didn't want to do it anymore. Eventually, she told that girl's mom. She explained everything she felt, and that woman was shocked because she felt so too. And she thought she was the only one. She also said she heard weird noises and lights used to go on and off by themselves. She found open doors that were closed and her dog, who was usually very calm, used to scream randomly at the walls. That woman started panicking and went to the palace keeper to ask him explanations. She felt stupid asking such things, but wanted answers. The old man told her she wasn't the only one. Basically everyone felt that, and he knew why. The palace maid, who was mentally ill, committed suicide by throwing herself down the stairs. The woman was completely shocked at that point, so she decided to move. While she was planning on moving, the dead maid's niece, who was also a maid, suicided by throwing herself from the window. Yes, she moved, and it still makes my mom feel sick. Nineteen seventy to seventy two, not far from Baltimore and before Hurricane Agnes. I was preteen at the time. All the kids and adults would gather in front of the houses where the roads came together. Most nights the adults would gather and talk. Kids played in the streets or rode bikes. Summer evening around nine PM, and I used to see planes over by Friendship Airport. Westinghouse was next to that, so sometimes experimental military planes could be seen. That evening, we noticed a very strange aircraft over that way. The light pattern and way it moved were very strange, and it just vanished. Not long after, a streak in the sky, assuming meteor, and it burst overhead. We all saw what looked like three to five foot shiny pieces of metal, like foil falling. The edges were glowing like hot metal, and they were burning up before hitting the ground. Just then, instead of looking up, I looked around me. Took me a second to realize everyone was frozen. The flakes were still falling, but people were frozen. I then noticed that one other boy was seeing me. He was a few years younger and not one of my friends, so didn't know him. That quick, everything went back to normal and everyone acted like nothing had just happened. I ran to my parents asking what had just happened. They looked at me very confused and told me to go play. Over the years, as I was the only one who seemed to remember that incident, I decided it must have been a dream and tried to forget it. Fast forward 25 plus years. I'm working near Dulles Airport in Virginia. A guy my age and two women get on the elevator with me. He's talking with, to them and mentions my old neighborhood. So I asked him if he grew up there and he said yes. Next thing he says as we're getting off the elevator, do you remember that night of the shooting star? falling metal and everything froze. A shock went through me. I said, yes, I remember that. And he said, really? You're the first person who ever said they did. After that, it bothered me quite a bit. What happened? And why did that guy comment happen all these years later? It bothered me so much. I even tried to see a hypnotist to go back to that night, but I couldn't get into the trance or whatever. So waste of time and money. Anyways, Maybe someone out there experienced this as well. If so, you're not alone. It all started when my girlfriend told me about what she saw in fifth grade. She told me that one night her and her sister were sleeping in her room and her sister woke up from a loud bang on the closet door. Her sister tried waking her up but she never budged. She didn't know what to do, but she was scared, so she left the room. The next morning, Peyton woke up, thankfully. She went about her morning as usual and went to her closet for a shirt. She was met with a white figure with black pulsating eyes. She stared into them and saw a black smoke-type substance ooze out. She screamed and ran away to her mom, but she didn't even believe her. Even when she showed the scars it gave her in her sleep, her mom just chose to believe she did it to herself. 
When she told me about this for the first time, I immediately didn't feel right about something. And the feeling has never gone away to this day, every time I'm at her house. I always feel like I'm being watched. It's even worse when I'm going through shit. It's like I can feel it feeding off my pain and energy. The same for her too. I know it is. I feel a dark intention over everybody living there. Ever since we had started getting paranoid about this shit, it feels like it's becoming more tangible as the days go by. The only time I don't feel it is when me and her are having a good time and being calm together. I feel like the only way to manage it is to turn it into something positive, but it just feels all too sinister to get rid of with good thoughts. It makes its way to us, I feel like. I'm not exaggerating. In mid-2020, around six months or so in, she started having these moments where she would just, like, not even be herself at all, and just act weird and stare at me with a blank expression. And a minute later, she would act as if nothing happened. I begged her to chill the fuck out most of the time it happened, because she would say shit like, I love you so much, Peyton, and let's do something together, and shit like that. She would have a disturbing amount of joy in her face. Well, not so much joy, but more like delusional sounding. It sounded like the tone you would use if you responded to someone saying, I'm so ready for this year, but didn't mean it at all, and just sounded like you're annoyed and angry overall. Sometimes I would just stare at her while this happened, until it stopped, and she came back. She would always play it off like nothing happened, but I just think she wants to believe that nothing really did happen. So every time I would either not say shit and act like it didn't happen, or freak the fuck out and beg her to tell me what the hell's going on. But usually, a response never got further than a worried, just stop talking, I don't want to be scared of Peyton. But all of this stopped when something weird and unexplainable happened. Me and her were sitting at her coffee table, just hanging out one day, and I was looking around for my vape. I remembered setting it behind me upon a quick search. It was nowhere in sight. I asked her if she had it with her, and she told me she didn't have it. We looked around for a minute before giving up, leaving me baffled and agitated. But when I said the words, where could it be, or something along those lines, mine and her eyes both followed something, falling from above our head. We saw it land on the table right next to a lighter, without moving an inch from the exact angle and point it fell. It didn't even bounce. It was as if it was set on the table by a machine or some shit, That's the only way I can describe it because of how unnaturally the shit felt. After we had frantically tried making explanations for what had just occurred, something else happened. I asked her how the vape could have been landed like that, and she responded with a confused, wait, what? I repeated myself and told her what had happened, confused as fuck as to why all of a sudden she was acting like this. She told me she saw the lighter fall next to the vape. To this day, I don't know how to explain this one plausibly. I don't think I'll ever be able to do that honestly. After this happened, shit had cooled down for a while. Nothing had happened to raise concern or anything. I didn't even feel its presence anymore. It might have been from us trying to ignore it, but it did go away for a few months. But once I brought my friend Zach over to the house, shit hit the fan. We were all hanging out as planned. But when he went upstairs, Zack started acting weird. He looked like he was hiding something from us, so I asked him if he was alright. Right then and there, I saw his face go pale, and he started dragging himself along the kitchen wall. His face brought the calendar to the ground, and he went with it. He hit the ground with ease, so I thought he was fucking with us at first. I helped him up while I gave him shit and made jokes like, I knew I couldn't stand you, and dumb shit like that. I asked if he was alright, and he reassured me that everything was fine, and that he just needed to eat because he was lightheaded. So I went to the fridge and got some turkey and cheese out, and turned to get the bread on the other side of the kitchen. I glanced to him, and I thought he was checking out my girl, so I sized him up right there. But it turns out he was blacking out from something. How did I find out? It looked like he let go of his body, literally. I thought he died right then and there because he dropped harder than a fucking dumbbell would hitting the ground. And the fucked up part is, before he dropped, he got one more worried sentence else. This place is fucking haunted. When I think about that day, I still hear the loud bang repeat in my head. 
Something about it just fucked me up. Now, a few months ago, me and her were in the basement in the exact spot as we were when the incident happened with the vape and the lighter. Except, I was living there at the time due to my parents kicking me out. The police had showed up and illegally kicked me out because of my stepmom telling them I wasn't supposed to be there. The fact of the matter is, I was with my girlfriend at the time, and we had blown up an air mattress for me to sleep on while I stayed there. The coffee table was moved to the wall while me and her just hung out and cuddled on the air mattress. But after a while of doing that, she wanted to have a sick. So she looked in the rest of the pack she was saving. She told me one was missing, and I looked around where I was laying so I could find it. But once I showed the least bit of a hint that I was giving up on finding it, which was literally sighing, it fell from above our fucking heads and landed next to my hand. Me and her both saw the exact same thing that time. But after it happened, we went on with our day and tried laughing it off. But it was honestly just awkward as fuck after that happened. A little while after that happened, my friend Zach came over again. When he arrived, we started making jokes about him passing out and stuff, just fucking with him for real. And overall, the whole day went as planned. But near the end of the day, me, my girlfriend, Peyton and him were all on the mattress when all of a sudden, Zach and her heard a loud crash coming from the bathroom. I didn't hear it because I had music on my phone and I was holding it relatively close to my face. So I was skeptical when Zach told me something crashed in the bathroom. But when I saw my girl kind of freaking out, I went to go check the bathroom to calm her. I also didn't need Zach passing out again just in case this was a contributing factor. And I wanted to make my girl feel safe. So I went over to the bathroom door and opened it. On the ground was her basket of bathroom stuff, laying upside down with everything still in it. Keep in mind that the basket was sitting on top of the toilet with perfect balance before. It fit the whole top lid of the toilet, around two feet or less wide. So it had to be pushed off with a lot of force to recreate that kind of thing without getting shit all over the floor. And at that moment, I realized I don't know if I should bring my friend Zach here anymore. This was the second time shit happened while he was there and things were getting tense between everyone. So we just called it a day and he went home. The most recent thing to happen actually occurred at her brother's house. This makes me think it can follow people. Because when I passed out on the bed downstairs with her and her brothers, she tried waking me up because I had to go upstairs. Her brother and his girl wouldn't let me and her ever sleep together. And I know that for a fact. I wouldn't be caught dead like that ever, I know for that for sure. Because frankly, I'm not trying to get killed. But anyways, I fell asleep in the bed a few minutes before she tried shaking me awake. And she said I didn't respond in the slightest. She had to shake me as violently as she could to get me up. And after she did so, I got up really fast. And she told me I started staring at her. She said she remembers me talking like I was emotionally dead or something. And that I was saying the weirdest shit. She claimed I would look at her with a wide-eyed expression and be like, I love you, and I'm not leaving Peyton. She said she tried shaking me even more, because after that, I just stared off into space with a mad expression pointing her way. But once she shook a response out of me, apparently I swung my arm towards her. If you know me, I take a fucking bullet before I even think about laying a hand on my girl. But after this, she yelled at me and demanded I go upstairs. Apparently, I yelled fine and walked toward the stairs menacingly. She told me I'd climb the stairs like nothing, while having no appearance of even being aware of anything at all. She's pretty sure my eyes were closed while I was going up the stairs too. I don't know what happened to me, but I think it might have something to do with the way she was acting all that time ago. But the fact of the matter is, something is in her house, and it needs to leave us the fuck alone. I took a trip with my friend to visit her family for a few days. The first night, we took her car for a test drive after helping her dad with the car around 1am. The city was built on Native American burial grounds, so most graves were dug up and dismantled, so hauntings are common here and invites more bad hosts. Anyway, as her dad was talking about his experience with stuff here, he mentioned La Lechuza, 
a witch from Mexican folklore that takes form of an owl. And as he started to talk about her, a giant owl swoops in front of us, nearly hitting the owl, and we all just shut up for a moment. Then we see another giant owl later on a sign in a residential area, and to confirm it was an owl, he pointed a flashlight at it, but refused to turn on again and again. When the owl flew away, it decided to turn on, and that's when we all agreed to go home. Later that night, I got high with my friend, and after a while, we went our separate ways. I'm in her brother's room playing Xbox, still pretty high. Her brothers leave downstairs while I'm there alone in the dark with the screen on. She's in the room next to me and texts me, Hey, are you upstairs by any chance? I say yes, why? Moments later, a black transparent figure slowly walks in front of the TV, and with the blink of an eye, it's gone. I got scared, so I left to where my friend is at. I thought, man, maybe I'm tripping. She told me she heard footsteps upstairs when her brothers were already downstairs. I wasn't walking. Later, everyone is in the room with us, having a good time, when the youngest brother comes in, running upstairs, crying and scared. He saw a black, transparent figure, face and all, try to reach out towards him, coming from the downstairs garage. Her dad had told us prior that the house has something that hasn't disturbed them like it did tonight at all. I just didn't want to believe it. We all slept in the living room together after, because three of us confirmed we saw and heard something. Crazy night. I still kept going over though. As a child and young teen, I always had this feeling that something or someone was around me. Not unlike that feeling you get when you're asleep and someone is staring at you when you wake up. Maybe that's not the best description, but the actual feeling is not dissimilar. When I was young, I lived in a cul-de-sac that housed about six families, all of which were fairly young and had children around my own age. Most of us became quite close. I became very close with one particular family, and mostly besides my best friend, the mother of that family. We talked about things that in hindsight were probably not normal at that age, but not in the sense that it was obscene or threatening, it was just scary. Scary on a level that portrayed emotion wouldn't be able to be observed. It was emotional, and yes, at first, obviously verbal, yet something I can't quite describe with words. It started with me telling her of things I had seen. Nothing disturbing per se, but something I had learned to keep to myself in my early years. I'm still hesitating to word this to this day, but I'll do my best. From a young age, I always had this strange sense that there were people around me. I felt things and remembered things that I couldn't possibly by most standards remember, and I've creeped out my parents many times by doing so. They always chalked up to maybe seeing a photo or a video, but the absolute inexplicable they just chose to laugh off and disregard, which was fine by me, and still is to some extent, but recently I've become personally affected by these memories or thoughts. I'm not sure anymore. This brings me to the present day. As someone who is dreaming vividly and thinking they're seeing the very things I thought I saw and felt as a child, coming to fruition after many years of suppressing and denial. I'm so confused. I can't help but to keep thinking back to those discussions I had with the mother of my best friends. The words I heard, the children I saw in corners huddling and crying that were not really there. The intuitions that turned into reality and the fact that she told me I had psychic abilities and she could feel my energy, which I didn't understand then and wish I didn't now. All of it freaked me the fuck out. It does freak me out. I'm not sure why after many years of dedicated and deliberate su suppression, this is all flooding back into my mind with the force of a tsunami now, but all that I can say is I wish I could stop it. It feels like I'm going insane. Am I? When I was a little girl, I lived in a little house, though it seemed massive at the time, on a large piece of horse stable property in Holly, Michigan. It was a household belief that the place was haunted. It was also a household belief that the spirit was benevolent, but that didn't stop it from giving quite the scare. Dishes fell off counters, the front door closed by itself, 
and on one occasion, a row of porcelain dolls all stacked at different levels of shelving and surfaces fell like dominoes. When we decided it was haunted, there were seven of us there. Me, my sister, my dad, his girlfriend and her three kids. But the girlfriend and kids had left and my sister was spending the night with her friends and my father and I were in two separate corners of the house. So maybe the ghost was shy. I had just turned off the lights and crawled into bed, shut my eyes when I heard someone say my name. I opened my eyes to a pale slender figure with jet black hair crawling toward me. When I recall the figure, I only see two black holes for my eyes and two black slits for nostrils. I like it too much to Michael Jackson's skin suit in Scary Movie 3. It may have had distinguishable features, but I didn't commit them to memory. It seemed calm. It seemed it may be trying to say something to me, maybe even console me. As it reached toward me, but I panicked. I screamed and my dad busted into the room instantaneously and turned on the lights. Being he was on the opposite side of the house with two hallways in a living room to get through, I assume I was screaming before I'd actually realised. The figure had vanished, and my dad and I slept in the living room that night. When I was there, I got tasked to help with housekeeping and cleaning rooms. I did a night shift in the ER, emergency room. Usually there's only one other person that actually works there to help when needed. For the first month, I didn't really realise anything out of the ordinary, except the feeling I was being watched. I didn't really think much about it because, well, I was in my military uniform cleaning rooms of people who got released or passed away. This one time, I felt that there was something more than just people watching me. When I was in a room, just me and I just had this weird type dread of being watched by something. While I was cleaning the room, it felt like there was someone there just in a corner but I couldn't see them. Toward the end, right when I was about to leave, I felt extremely cold. Not like a weird chill, like a type of a death chill. It was such a weird feeling, something I had never felt before. After I left, I just felt so scared till I relaxed. I don't understand what could have caused it or how I got so cold in a matter of seconds. This also happened in the ER while I was by myself again. How fun. So in the hospital, all the soap and hand sanitizer are all motion activated. It started out as a slow night, about two rooms an hour. After about eight hours, I was nearing the end of my shift. I had one more room to clean. As I was cleaning, I started to have the feeling I was being watched. So I just ignored the feeling. Probably not the best idea, as you'll see. After about five minutes of feeling that I was being watched, I started cleaning the bed, which was the last thing I had to do. As I was cleaning, the soap dispenser went off, even though I was the only person there. I ignored it, as I was going to clean it before I left. Not even 30 seconds later, I heard footsteps in the bathroom, and being me, I decided to look to see if anyone was in there. As soon as I poked my head in, I got so cold and got instant goosebumps. So I left the room and I started cleaning a public bathroom for the last 30 minutes of my shift. As I was cleaning the bathroom, the towel dispenser just kept spitting out paper towels after paper towels. After that, I was done with my shift and left. The first experience I remember happened during summer break, after the first grade also in my childhood home. The very first occurred in my childhood home that my father built in the mid 60s, before I was born. I'm not sure exactly what year. I sold it in 2016 after my mom passed and I couldn't find the exact year it was built when I went to pull the deed. It was a three bedroom ranch in a great neighborhood. There were lots of kids my age and an awesome place to grow up. Small town in South Carolina near Myrtle Beach. My father passed that spring and my mother had a full-time job. She didn't like leaving me by myself. I have a brother that's nine years older and the couple next door were retired and they kept an eye out for me. This was the mid-70s and there was virtually no crime in this town, so it was relatively safe. On this day, my brother and mother were at work, but the neighbours were home. 
I was in my backyard playing football with my friends when nature called. I went inside our house to drop the kids off at the pool. While doing so, I clearly heard a woman's voice say my first name, followed by my first and last name. Like, Richard. Then a few seconds later, Richard Johnson. Not my name, but the same number of syllables. It was a pleasant voice with no urgency. It was melodic in tone, almost sung. It was somewhat unnatural. I'm not sure how else to explain it. It wasn't muffled, then it sounded like the woman was in the house. I remember thinking that it was weird, and the voice wasn't a familiar one. Initially, I wasn't scared as I thought it could have been the neighbour. It wasn't unusual for people to drop by. Our home had lots of drop-in visitors. I quickly finished up my business and looked around the house. It was empty. I started thinking that I didn't hear the back door open before I heard it. Normally I would have. The back door had a cheap storm door with a little hydraulic arm and spring that would creak and pop when it opened and closed. The front door was almost never opened and locked up tight. Now I'm freaking out. I went next door to ask my neighbour if she had come by. She said no and asked if someone was in our house. I told her no and it must have been the TV, trying to hide my fear and anxiety. I was positive the TV wasn't on. Also, no radios or anything else. I didn't let her know I was freaking out inside because my mother was hesitant to let me stay home by myself as it was. If I had alarmed the neighbour, I'd be sent to daycare or relative's house. I knew this and didn't want that. Mom had already threatened this if I got into trouble and I wanted to spend the summer with my friends. There are possible explanations for this, such as an auditory hallucination, some other person stopping by, etc., I never had any auditory hallucinations before or since. Another neighbour or family member would not have come in and left so quickly. I was out of the restroom in less than a minute after hearing this. There simply wasn't enough time for anyone to get back to their vehicle and leave. Our driveway was long, with a circle around the front yard. My friends in the backyard didn't see anyone else go into my house. I never said anything else about this to anyone and I just put it in the back of my mind. I just let it go and went back to playing football. This is the first time I remember and very mild compared to the others to come. I've had maybe a dozen throughout my life and I'm middle-aged. I've never actually counted them. My experiences have been years apart. As I've gotten older, I believe that I'm somewhat sensitive to the other side or however you want to define it. I don't claim to understand it. I believe in the spirit world and the possibility of interdimensional beings. Though I grew up in a Christian home, I'm not a religious person. I do not believe in organised religion. However, I do believe that there's something beyond this reality, whether it's the spirit world or anything else that we can't or don't comprehend fully. I've studied many religions, including the dark ones, as well as Wicca and Voodoo. I've done this out of curiosity mainly. I don't believe in them for the most part. This encounter happened a few years after my first experience, where I heard a woman's voice calling my name. It had been a couple of years since my father passed. My mum had started dating a man she met at church that would soon become my stepfather. It was a warm summer Sunday night and I was home alone as I didn't want to go to the evening church service. I loved Sunday night TV and was watching my favourite shows. I was hungry and went to the kitchen to get a snack. I could easily see the TV from the kitchen table as our home had an open floor plan. Everything was good and I was enjoying the shows and having my snack at the kitchen table. Then the lights dimmed and flickered. It wasn't uncommon during this area to have brownouts in this area of South Carolina. This time was different though. The atmosphere in the house became heavy, dark and evil. It got really cold and I was immediately weirded out. The lights flickered for a minute or two and then went back to normal. Okay, weird, and I felt uneasy. I remember losing focus on the TV and being hyper aware of something or someone being with me. I tried to brush it off and continue to watch TV, but I could barely focus on it. A few seconds later, I saw a shadow figure out of my peripheral moving around the entrance of the hallway, to the right, 
and a door directly in front of me that looked into the unlit dark formal room. The hallway went to the back of the house where the bedrooms were. I'm spooked out big time, but I hesitantly go to investigate this shadow figure. I look down the long hallway, formal room and bedrooms. Nothing there. There shouldn't. Couldn't have been anyone else in the house anyway. They would have had to enter through the back door located behind the den, through the mudroom and past my line of sight. It couldn't have entered through the front door in the formal room. It was an oversized, heavy, solid wood door, secured by a bolt lock and difficult to open due to the frame swelling from the humidity. This door made a lot of noise when simply unlocking the bolt and definitely when opening it. We rarely used it. So it's not possible that someone entered the house without being seen or heard. I'm very spooked and uneasy, but try to convince myself that it was just a flicker of the power and I was imagining the shadow figure. I'd lost my appetite and went back into the den leaving my food on the table and started trying to watch TV. That heavy feeling had not left the house, but I tried to ignore it hoping it would go away. A few minutes later, I saw the shadow standing to my left in the kitchen, out of the corner of my eye. As I turned to look at it, it slowly faded. I'm now frozen with fear. The lights dim again and I hear a scraping noise from outside of the house which sounds like someone dragging a rake or something metal down the brick exterior walls. I noped right out of my house immediately and ran into my neighbor's backyard. I'm scared to be inside or outside of my house at this point. I'm terrified more than I ever have in my life. I don't feel safe in the neighbor's yard either, but I'm a few hundred feet away from my house. My neighbors are not home and their house is completely dark. From where I'm standing, I can see into the den through a large picture window. The room is lit by one lamp and I can see shadows moving about. At one point, I see the shadow watching me through this window. This lasted for several seconds, it seemed like an eternity. It wasn't shaped like a person, but more like a tall dark void of empty nothing. Around three feet wide and over six feet tall. It went beyond the top of the window that was three feet tall six feet wide, and the top was six feet off the floor. This entity didn't feel friendly. It felt angry and hostile. It oddly felt familiar though. A minute later, I see headlights coming down the driveway. It's my mom and stepfather-to-be. A sense of relief came over me and that heavy feeling dissipated. Almost immediately, the shadow disappeared and everything went back to normal. My mom sees me in the neighbor's yard and is immediately pissed that I'm outside. I incoherently try to offer up some kind of explanation, but I'm rambling gibberish. My mom being short-tempered says, just get your butt inside, there's nothing in there. I hesitantly did as told. When we got inside, she was not happy about the kitchen being in a complete mess. My food was scattered all around the table and floor. I didn't do that. I usually cleaned up after myself. I had no explanation and had given up on trying to explain what happened. I knew it would sound unbelievable anyway. I have no explanation for this experience, even after decades of research into the paranormal. Perhaps it was my father's spirit, angry about the presence of another man in the house he built. Or when my friends and I found a Ouija board in a closet and asked it a couple of questions. That's another story for later. This visitor or something similar would return again soon. The scraping noise would also return a few more times over the years. It's really great to tell these events after all these years. A short time before the encounter with the shadow entity, my friends and I were playing at my house. There were about four of us, don't exactly remember. I had a lot of friends in my neighborhood within three years of age. I was very young. We were bored and decided to play Monopoly or something. We had a closet full of board games. This was the late 70s. While digging through the games, we found a Ouija board. I'm not sure where it came from. It didn't just appear or anything like that. My father built the house and Parker Brothers made them and they could be purchased at most department stores. My older brother probably bought it, I don't know. 
I'd seen one on TV, so I kind of knew how to use it. My friends and I started asking questions, and the planchette started slowly moving. They were dumb kid questions, and I really don't remember them. Except for one. Convinced that one of my friends was moving the planchette, I decided to ask something to prove whether it was real or not. Everyone swore they weren't moving it. The questions were mostly yes-no things, and it moved with purpose. I didn't have a clue what my mother's age was. Never had any reason to think about it, and didn't care. I'm sure my friends could have cared less about it too, so that's what I asked. The planchette moved again, pointing to two numbers. My friends asked me, is it right? I didn't know, and they were like, Dan, why'd you ask? I just said, I don't know. We said we were done, and the planchette moved to buy. A little freaked and bored with it, we put it away. When mum got home, I asked, mom, how old are you? She told me, and the board was correct. This was an odd experience for a couple of reasons. I was so young, I didn't know or care. I'd never had a reason to wonder or care about this. My mother had me at a late age, so she was a good decade older than my friend's mothers. I was a little freaked out about this, but I really just found it strange. In the dream, it's always me, walking along a rural path, similar to that of the farms and land on the outskirts of my city. Everything is normal, except that it's night and there is fog. There is also no one on the street. Apparently, at the end of that path, there is always a group of people whose voices, distance, are always familiar to me. In fact, I think they are my friends, and sometimes, people I know from high school are with whom I interact daily. The strange thing is, is that as much as I hurry, I never manage to reach them. That's when the fog becomes denser and I lose sight of them. That's when it starts, when I get lost for not seeing more than 10 meters in front of me, and I have to shout to call them, but nobody answers me. The air turns cold and I run to a barn that I know is empty, only with an old tractor and an electrical pole. I climb to the top of the tractor to try to see them and also to be heard better, and she appears. First, it's like something I seem to see on the ground. Then I distrust and proceed to climb on the roof of the barn. Once there, I can see that it appears, as if crawling on the floor, a very thin woman, almost skeletal, with very long and tangled hair, completely naked. Then I climb a little more, until I pass the other side of the roof, where the light pole is. And suddenly, she appears without more than the top of that same roof and looks at my face, twisting her body, like screaming. That's when I see her up close and her body is rotten, almost grey, with huge eyes of a glowing green that is not natural. He lunges at me with a sort of howl, drooling, and I duck out of the way in time for him to hit the light pole and get a little, little electrocuted. I climb down the wood and run. I wake up. This would be nothing more than a recurring nightmare, but now comes what is beginning to worry me. It's been several times that I seem to see it or it's, it's present in my day to day in some way. The other day I was having a milkshake with my colleagues until they went to pay, just for a moment. And in that couple of minutes, I thought I saw her standing across the street, looking at me ecstatic. Yesterday, returning late through the neighborhood, there were no people on the street for a few moments, and there was a strange silence. Then a strange breathing caught my attention, and I looked towards the window of one of my neighbours. At first I thought it was her mother, an old woman peeking out. But then I noticed her long hair like a shadow, and suddenly a thin grey hand slammed down hard on the glass from inside the house. There are more strange situations, but those two are the most recent. What I find surprising is that it happens when nobody can verify me if they see something, or if it's just me who has the paranoia. I mentioned it to a friend and he told me to ignore it, that it would be nonsense. But the concern came when I was in the park with two friends and when they went to buy some sweets, I just watched a girl playing on a swing far away from me. That woman appeared behind the swing in the blink of an eye and the girl fell face down and fainted how strong the blow was. Her mother and I ran to see how she was doing 
and she ended up taking her to a hospital. From that moment on, I'm kind of scared. About two or three years ago, when I was a gerontology student in Venezuela, I spent five days a week at my grandmother's house, and then returned home on weekends. The issue is that at the time, Venezuela had a critical situation in relation to pensions for the elderly, who had to get up early at about 2 or 3 a.m. in my city to stand in line at the bank. They even hoped that at some point during the day, afternoon or even evening, they would be able to receive the money and return home. I apologise for telling these details, but I consider them necessary so that you can understand where I was at the moment that this paranormal event occurred. It all began on a Tuesday at about 8pm. My grandmother told me that she would be leaving with a friend to go to the pension at about 3.30 or 4am on Wednesday. So in case I woke up and did not find her at home, I would already know where she was. Since this was not the first time this has happened, I decided to set my alarm on my cell phone to go off around 7am so that I would be up by 8am to complete my chores for the day. I spent a quiet night without any problems, but the weirdness started first thing when I woke up. But at that moment, I had no idea it was going to be a weird event. The alarm went off at 7am and I woke up completely. I'm more difficult to get out of bed than to wake up. Then the first thing I see is that the bathroom next to my room is with the light on. I noticed that because I leave a little open the door of my room because the air conditioning was very powerful. So the light of the bathroom or the hallway would be easy to observe. Then, not only was the light on, but I could hear the sound of my grandmother's makeup case being handled. At that moment, I was a little surprised, thinking that my grandmother had not gone to the bank. But I didn't give it much importance. I thought that surely she had returned for breakfast because someone was watching her place in line or something like that. Of course, I didn't dare go out to say good morning because of the same laziness of having to get out of bed. So I turned to the opposite direction of my bedroom door and started to check my cell phone. The noise continued until it stopped. I heard my grandmother touch the button to turn off the bathroom light. I heard how she closed the bathroom door and I heard how she went down the stairs. Everything went on as normal and I got out of bed at about 8.30 had breakfast, and had a quiet morning. My grandmother came home around 12.30 noon. Everything was normal, until I asked her why she had left so late, and not in the early morning as she had said. My grandmother looked at me with a confused face, and told me that she had been out of the house since 4am. Normally, one who lives a normal life and has to live experiences like these, can end up being more than scary. However, this was a little surprising for me, because I had never had an experience like this, but I did have a little history with weird experiences. Of course, after explaining this to my grandmother, she was more than surprised than me, as expected. Unfortunately, an experience of this type did not happen again. Although strange things happened, but it was not something frequent, but something that happened suddenly and already. But I must say that I never liked that house, because I feel that it has something that makes it uncomfortable for me. But that's history for another time. Oddly enough, I remember that we seemed to have gotten the same spot we had gotten the previous year. At the top of the hill, not far from the path that leads down to the lake itself, where there was a dock. When we got there, my brother was excited to get down to the lake and start fishing right away. I stayed near my parents while they set up our camper and camp. I remember seeing a walking stick insect for the first time. Being a bit afraid and amazed by this strange bug and playing with it and some other insects. Fast forward a few hours and my mother told me to head down to the lake and get my brother for dinner. I was walking down the path, almost to the lake, when suddenly I heard my brother yell, Son of a bit! Then I heard a splash. I ran down the path and found my brother in the lake, up to his knees, bending over trying to grab something in the water. Later I found out that after hours of fishing, he finally caught a fish. And just as he was pulling it up, it fell off the hook and back into the water. He was determined not to lose the fish, so he jumped in the lake to catch it with his bare hands. 
He claims that he was able to grab the fish, but it shot out of his hands like a wet bar of soap. Shoots out of your hands when you grab it. A while later, after dinner, we were all sitting around the campfire roasting hot dogs or marshmallows, having fun and talking, when something came walking out of the fire. It walked or looked exactly like a turtle, only it seemed to be made of burning coals. It looked like a glowing, red-hot burning log, but in the shape of a turtle, and it was walking. Being the small child and animal lover that I was, I jumped up to go help this poor creature. One of my parents grabbed me and held me back, knowing I would burn myself trying to save it. My whole family saw it. We were all surprised and confused about what it was and how it could still be alive. My older brother got up, walked over to the turtle that was still walking at this point. He took a stick and struck it hard right in the middle of its shell. It immediately shattered into pieces. Of course, I was devastated that my brother had just killed it. My parents held me and kept me from going over to it. In the morning, I went out to look at the shattered remains and body of the animal, and all I found were a bunch of cold coals, like burned chunks of wood from a fire. I didn't find a shell, bones, or burnt animal at all, just black coals. Like someone had taken hot coals out of the fire and placed them where my brother had killed the turtle creature slash thing. I've talked to my family about this since then. Surprisingly, only my brother seems to have a vague memory of it happening. I don't know how my parents don't remember this strange occurrence. This was not a spiritual manifestation, or hallucination, or illusion, etc. This is an actual event that happened. Has anyone ever heard or seen of such a thing before? So far, I haven't met or talked to a single person, outside my family that witnessed it, that has ever heard of or experienced anything remotely like this. Even if it was a living turtle, how could it be completely burned up and still survive long enough to walk out of the fire, the distance of at least three feet, before my brother shattered it? In 2018 2019, I was dating this guy, and I would always sleep over at his place on the weekends. I would sleep on the right side of the bed and he would sleep on the left side. One night, I woke up because I guess I could feel something staring at me. I opened my eyes and my boyfriend was sitting on the edge of the bed, to my right, just staring at me and smiling, but the way he looked was so creepy. Nothing different about how he looked, but the only way I can explain it is evil. Like a super big smile and wide eyes just staring at me, but not saying anything. This guy would always mess with me and joke around, so I thought he was just trying to freak me out or something. I was about to ask him what he was doing, like the words were about to come out, when all of a sudden, I felt his body laying down, asleep, and heard him breathing deep to the left of me. I immediately knew this thing that was staring at me was not my boyfriend. I stopped myself from saying anything or even looking at my actual boyfriend lying next to me. I was still looking right at whatever this thing was that I had thought was my boyfriend. I had an overwhelming sense of just feeling like I was in danger, and if I said anything or looked at my boyfriend to my left, it would know that I knew it wasn't my boyfriend, and something bad would happen. All of this was going through my mind super fast, like it was maybe three seconds after I realised my boyfriend was actually asleep to my left, that I just quickly grabbed the comforter closing my eyes and threw it over my head while turning to my life, grabbing hold of my real boyfriend. And I just stayed like that until I fell back asleep. I've had sleep paralysis before, a couple times, and I know how it feels. This was not sleep paralysis. I still remember every detail so vividly and have no explanation for it. I've always believed in the paranormal, alternate dimensions, and extraterrestrials. I just generally believe that the universe is extremely vast, and humans can't possibly mentally grasp everything out there, and anything is possible. However, I've never been very sensitive to anything like that. 
I've experienced spooky things, sure, but nothing too extreme for me to explain it away. Picture frames that have been hung for years, dropping to the floor, seemingly out of nowhere, my childhood home, hearing unexplained footsteps, etc. All things I could dismiss. I've also seen several UFOs on the same night. Let me know if you'd like to hear about that. But about a year ago, something happened that I've never been able to explain, and I can't get it out of my head. I live in central Arkansas, and was staying in a rented house with my stepsister and her boyfriend. I was 21. It was one floor, three bedrooms and two bathrooms. The living room and dining room were at the front of the house, connecting to the kitchen. Then there's a short hallway going down to all three bedroom doors, at the back of the house. It was about midnight, and my stepsister and her boyfriend both had work early in the morning, and were asleep. I was still awake, but was getting ready for bed. I also would like to note that I had not been drinking, smoking, or watching anything scary. I'd been chilling in my room watching TV and was definitely not in a paranoid state of mind. I remember thinking my room was too warm for me to go to sleep. It was May and Arkansas was already hot for the summer. I decided to turn my TV off and go to turn the thermostat down a little bit. The thermostat is located in the little hallway, just a few feet from my bedroom door. When you step into the hallway from the bedrooms, you can clearly see into the living room. We had a sliding glass door where you can see into the backyard and a motion sensor light on the back porch. We would not only lock the sliding door, but also have a pole wedged into it from the inside, so it will not open unless you move the pole. When I stepped into the hallway and made just a couple steps towards the thermostat, the motion light out was back on, and I could clearly see two people in the living room. They looked like they were facing each other on the couch, or just crouching in front of the couch. They were backlit from the outdoor light, so I couldn't clearly see faces, just their outline. At this point, my first thought was that my stepsister and her boyfriend were fooling around in the living room. It was completely dark apart from the outdoor light, no TV on or anything, and for some reason I just thought they were in there to have sex or something. Doesn't make much sense in retrospect, but that was my original thought. I immediately felt embarrassed and loudly said, oh shit guys, I'm sorry. Then the two figures who were originally facing each other darted their heads towards me. It was very quick, almost as if I startled them. Thinking I had walked in on them and scared them, I quickly turned around and returned to my room, forgetting about the thermostat. I was kind of giggling to myself, still not feeling scared, just embarrassed and I thought it was funny. I turned my light off and went to lay down in bed. As I laid there, I was expecting to hear them going back into their room or laughing or something. Some sort of reaction. But nothing came. The house was so silent now without my TV on. I laid there for about five minutes, then started to get worried. I decided to call my stepsister to confirm what just happened. I assume her phone was on silence because her room was right next to mine and I didn't hear a ring. When she didn't answer, I called her boyfriend. His phone rang and he finally answered. It was clear that I had just woken him up because of how sleepy his voice sounded. I asked him if they were in the living room and he said no, that they were both asleep. And he sounded annoyed that I was calling him at midnight, knowing he had to be up around four. Still not even thinking about ghosts, I told them that I just saw two people in the living room and I think people had broken in. He woke my sister up told her what was going on, and they both grabbed something from the room to use as a weapon. All I had was a pocket knife, but I grabbed it and we all decided to leave our rooms at the same time, and step into the hallway. He walked ahead of us, and the three of us made our way into the living room, turning on lights as we walked. There was nothing. The pole was still wedged into the sliding door from the inside. The deadbolt and lower lock on the front door were still locked, as were all of the windows still being shut and locked. Nothing appeared out of place. They assumed I was high or had been drinking or something, or maybe just saw jackets hanging on the coat hooks. This experience still shakes me up to think about. I stand by there being absolutely no way I could have mistaken a jacket or a shadow for people, because when I spoke, the two figures had both quickly turned and faced me. The upper deadbolt on the front door could only be locked from the inside. 
There was no keyhole for it on the outside and no way for someone to leave and lock it behind them. There's also no way someone could leave throughout the sliding door and replace the pole on the inside that kept it closed. I've never experienced like this before or since. I'm certain now that what I saw was otherworldly and not intruders. Nobody believes me though. <laughs>